your This Year in Winnell edition of Winchester News Online. I'm Nadine Forsworth. In February, the area became a hive of political activity as Eastleigh's by-election played host to the biggest names in politics. I took a look back at the political landscape in Hampshire over the last few months. Chris Hewn resigned as MP for Eastleigh after pleading guilty to perverting the course of justice. He'd spent a decade denying the allegations that he made his former wife take speeding points for him. Do any allegations at all? Thanks, I've already uh, responded and I'm helping the police and I'm sure they'll get to the bottom of matters. This then sparked a by-election in Eastleigh. When I'll follow the campaign of each of the candidates as they revealed what they hoped would come from this by-election. The big names all came out to support their parties. Nick Clegg came down to try and repair the damage to the Lib Dems that Hewn left behind. My strong suspicion is that when people come to cast their vote, or they'll be asked for themselves, who can be relied upon? The basic choice is between the Conservatives have a plan for getting on with improving the economy and getting people into work and sorting out the problems we got. <laughs> Well, we start here with a very much higher base than the previous by-elections. If we can rally the way we did in Rotherham and Corby and Middlesbrough, uh, we might be in with a chance. Ed Miliband made sure that nobody forgot who the Labour candidate was. Even the Prime Minister made an appearance to try and reclaim Eastleigh for the Conservatives. On the basis of high skills, high training, a high value. Um, but a few on the night of the up, count, our by-election special had reports live from the count and discussed the election with in-studio guests. As most of the activists are here already, there's a massive turnout for each of the parties. The, uh, the UKIP leader, Nigel Farage, has said that he will be disappointed if his candidate, Diane James, doesn't finish first or second in the by-election. I'll be back in 15 minutes with more breaking news. With a by-election, peculiar things happen. We have George Galloway in Parliament again. And so... Rightly or wrongly, I don't think you can read too much in by-election results and I think it's probably I appreciate the election. Liberal Democrat Mike Thornton won the Eastleigh seat with UKIP coming in second. <laughs> when I caught up with the new MP a few months um, later to see how he was getting obviously, on. Obviously, yeah, it, what is most important to me is always is to get back to the constituency so I can talk to my constituents there because that's, that, that's my first duty as to my constituents in Eastleigh. From a visit from royalty to outrage at housing plans, there's always something interesting happening in Winchester, despite its sleepy appearance. And Yolan Akinis takes us through the last few months in our city's community. Three, two, one, now. A new recipe for an all idea. Winchester MP Steve Bryan praised the local people in Stanmore when they opened a new library in London. When this change was proposed that we would lose the library in Stanmore, everybody feared the worst. But you know, change doesn't always have to be bad. Change can be good, and this is a great example of that. We understand that money is short, we understand you have to save money, but we don't accept losing our library. Royalty rolls into Winchester. He was greeted by the Chancellor of the University, Dame Mary Fagan. Are we ready? One, two, three, go! Yeah. MPs want to open the doors for gay marriage in England and Wales. Gay people feel and are discriminated against at the moment. That will begin to end. In 100 years' time, we'll look back at this as just another change. For others, it's personal. Two people who are in love should be married. I got taught that. Every day, three-year-old May enjoys playing in the peaceful park near her home. But if the council has its way, some of Charles' clothes could soon be transformed to a building site. Love being outside. It's one of the things that makes Abbot Bar Abbot Spartan, if not the thing that makes it such a wonderful place to live. We need housing as long as we're not going to significantly damage those local communities, then that, that's a responsibility that we need to take on. Police and Crime Commissioner Simon Hayes gets straight to business with newly appointed Chief Constable Andy Marsh. A good organisation, I want to move it to a, a great one. Her, her purpose in life of a Police and Crime Commissioner is to, 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 to challenge the Chief Constable. Uh, a good working relationship with the Chief Constable and the PCC should not be missed. All from the wider community of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight um, and all who are partners that we'd like to work with in the future to achieve the objectives in the plan. 
Well, I think the really good thing is that Mr Hayes has been fully consultative, not only with the public, but me and my staff about the plan. See, I'll roll with the panel. Winchester Crown Court, the second most important court in the country, has played host to some extraordinary cases over the past year. Our court correspondent, Christina Michaels, takes us through some of the more standout cases, starting with Chris Hune's conviction at Southwark Crown Court. Jostled and shoved. Months before, Chris Hune was a cabinet minister, but now he's just another criminal awaiting his sentence. Moments later, Vicky Price followed her ex-husband to Southwark Crown Court, flanked by police. Chris Hune and Vicky Price were both sentenced to eight months in jail. During the course of the three-hour trial, the judge said that Hune had fallen from a great height and that Price had shown no remorse. She was on her way to a party, but she was struck from behind and killed in a car crash. An alcoholic attention seeker was jailed for six years after she started a fire to get the attention of the emergency services. So we do get inappropriate calls, which is taking ambulances away from life-saving calls. It is a matter of life and death because, you know, we need to make sure our resources are used appropriately. It's nice to see that the society and the law courts are taking it seriously and acknowledging that the ambulance service is a precious resource. A drink and drug user has been jailed for seven years after he robbed and threatened a teenager earlier this year. It was here along this pathway, just off Charlton Road in Andover, where Robinson robbed the victim in broad daylight. This is the scene just before midnight, outside Jack's nightclub in Fleet in October 2011. The defendant, pictured here in the dark short sleeve shirt, was caught punching a bouncer on CCTV, an offence that he was convicted of at Winchester Crown Court. A gambling addict has been jailed for 18 months after fraud investigators found out he had stolen £56,000 from Basingstoke Hospital. Here is how the scam happened. Bull was employed by the NHS Trust as the supervisor in the canteen of Basingstoke Hospital. This is the scene of devastation caused by a suicidal totten man who poured petrol over his body and set himself alight in a fit of anguish. Lee Cooper from Mansur Walk Totten, described by the judge as an emotionally unstable drug user, pleaded guilty to being reckless as to whether life was in danger. Christina Michaels there. Now we have the highlights from everything in environment and transport. Our reporter Ellen Millard gives us the lowdown from everything in transport, bees, trees and land disease from this year. Schmellenberg virus, a disease that causes defect bursts in livestock, was found in the UK two years ago. In 2013, new government statistics revealed that over 1,500 new holdings have been identified to have the disease, 27 of which are in Hampshire. It's very difficult to know what we can do, to be honest. Um, I've heard of some flocks that have had a, a really terrible time with it. And dogs over the past three months. It is thought that the toxin makes its way into the dog's bloodstream after they get cuts on their legs and paws. A few days later, the dogs then go into kidney failure, which can be fatal. The forest is usually a haven for pet owners, but many are now avoiding the area. The UK temperature in March is nearly 9 degrees, but today is barely above freezing. This is the worst year in my 37 years beekeeping that I have ever known. Currently, there are no known Hampshire sites infected with the disease, but research is underway to see if any trees are at risk. It's had a very negative effect on the trees, obviously, because this is a very serious A recent decision has been made to ban wind turbines on all county-owned lands. Well, the farming community increasingly feels a role of stewardship, and uh, that's not just um, nature. Out with the old and in with the automated. It's only been a few days and some local motorists in Southampton are tired of the long queues cost by the new automated toll barrier system. Um, the traffic does seem to be heavier and it does slow, slow the traffic down. Just to the queues at the rush hour um, coming across. For months, 
People with an interest in the rise and the fall in the cost of fuel have been counting the days until the budget. I think the whole thing's disgusting. I think we're paying, paying far, far too much tax on fuel. It's extraordinary that, that the government are taking so much money from, from the public and from hauliers. Well, I, I personally recognise that we need to move forward to a situation where fuel duty and road tax, as we've had. Welcome back to this year on Winnell. Still to come, we have sports, features and the light side of the news, but first our top economic stories. With the recession continuing to plough on with no end in sight, our economic stories from Faith Thomas have been a bit doom and gloom this year. The UK is struggling to grow economically and George Osborne is under pressure today to deliver the right changes. The bankers are wary and they've told me that spending on infrastructure is something they'd like to see change. I don't think there's one thing. There are so many aspects of everybody's lives that are affected by the recession at the moment that the whole thing needs to change. But I think what he's got to do is he's got to stick to debt reduction. He's got to try and stimulate growth really with investment in infrastructure. MP Mike Thornton told us what he thinks we should expect from the budget. Most of us expecting is nothing particularly wonderful because of the current economic situation. However, we do know that we're going to get an increased level of tax allowance for ordinary people, which will make a big difference to everyone's take home pay. So fairer taxes are absolutely vital part of this. The fall of sales, investment abroad and cost cutting has forced the Southampton's Ford Transit Factory to close its gates. The production of the transit van will move to Turkey, where the factory was given an £80 million European loan to invest in the production there. It's all part of the EU empire wishing to expand and bribing the political class of these countries. It's monstrous. George Osborne, frankly, doesn't care about all the people who work in Ford. He doesn't care about the working class of Britain. Southampton-based Trimline Interiors has won a share in a £350 million Ministry of Defence contract for the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Flotilla. Managing Director Gary Oliver was overjoyed with the result. Oh, euphoria. I mean, um, it's a real endorsement for the, for the uh, um, staff that have worked on the, uh, on the contract for the last five years. Um, obviously, we're doing something right, although we wouldn't have extended it. With jobs in Southampton currently a big topic of discussion, it's the small firms like Trimline that might be saving the day. From doom and gloom to fashion and cars, Emma Hofberg now takes a look at our features material on Winchester News Online. Winnell is famed for its hard news approach, but over the past year our features section has been growing too, and it's been a real hit. In fashion, we had an exclusive sportswear photo shoot, followed by Britain's most beautiful online magazine, which went strength to strength with features on makeup, Style Wars, special graphics about special events, and we joined in with Political Scene by declaring the Eastleigh by-election a fashion disaster. For those with a taste for the wildlife, we went ape with Bronte Dawson. And a real highlight this year has been Sean Ward's motoring reviews. In a change of pace, Winnell's Video Arts magazine arrived on the scene with interviews and reviews. This year's sports coverage was marred by the terrible weather of the winter months, but far from letting that defeat our hardest sports team, they decided to delve into some of the less conventional sports. Our sports editor Sam Sheard took a look at the highlights. Snow stopped play at the beginning of the year, and with the slopes not treating us kindly, we retreated inside to see what the world of indoor sports had to offer. Wheelchair rugby was one of the most anticipated events of the Paralympics. It's fast, it's entertaining and it's brutal. The aim of the game is simple, get the ball over the opponent's line in less than 40 seconds. The tempo is relentless. Liam Garahan tried his hand at wheelchair rugby with mixed results. It's safe to say the Solent Sharks were better off without him. Thomas Baxter experimented with fencing, taking on Mark Lakovsky at Winchester's Club of Scream. He did not fare much better. Mark scored the first two points, but I gave myself a fighting chance when I made it 2-1. 
For now, I think I'll just leave it to those who know the sport best. Thomas Baxter, Winchester News Online. As the weather improved, we returned outside, with Liam Garahan taking on touch rugby once he got his bib on. So essentially, touch rugby is just like normal rugby, except it's not played on pitches like this one behind me. But I can't help but think there was something missing. Ah, now I remember. With the football season back in full swing, Winchester City manager James Taylor spoke exclusively to Winnell Sports of his team's struggles this season. You know, it's, it's hard work getting out of team. Um, to compete at this level without no money. Well, we've not been great. There's no, there's no point in uh, lying about it. You know, we haven't, we haven't done enough to win games. But... AFC Totten secured a mid-table finish, along with an impressive run in the Hampshire Senior Cup, ending with penalty shootout heartache at the hands of League Two Bournemouth. Eastleigh's stunning end of season form saw them seal a place in the playoffs. However, a poor first leg performance cost them a shot at promotion. Eastleigh rallied to a 2-0 victory in the second leg, but eventually went down on penalties, leaving Dover fans to celebrate a massive victory. And finally, after the past few months of hard-hitting news, politics and economics, we've always managed to end with a high on Winnell. Jack Webb takes a look at the lighter side of the news. The beers on this bus go down in rounds as it's been converted into a double-decker mobile pub. We're looking at trying to get into a... It's lambing season and Sparsholt College held an open farm day inviting the public to see all the cuddly animals and have a real farming experience. Well, it obviously shows the students what you can actually do um, on a farm. You can obviously open your farm to the public. And it's good that the public actually know where their meat and where their food comes from, really, and how animals are looked after and cared for. And obviously students get very involved with the lambing experience as well. An exciting story up next. An artist has commissioned an egg-shaped vessel to be created for him to live and work on this for a whole year. We're running through, through the vessel. And then at the fat end, we've got a loo and a shower area with wet and dry storage. Really, that's it, and a bed is going to be a hammock. This is not a boat. <laughs> you know, this is quite, quite a different concept. Heidi, a continental giant rabbit, has been having hydrotherapy to cure her arthritis. Swimming helps take pressure off of her joints and seems to be working. Now she's pain free and she's got more movement. You know, she's just got more life in her. This footage may look fake, but it is shockingly real. These amazing images were captured on a micro camera attached to a high altitude balloon up in the Earth's stratosphere. Um, I believe it started off as Super Ted um, into space. Uh, there's a fantastic story that he'd lost his powers and needed our help to chase Texas Pete um, up into space. That's one small step for a bear and one giant leap for bear kind.